Hello, family and friends. It's wonderful to be in the Word today. It's a glorious day. It's always glorious when we're in the Word of God. And today I want to share with you um, a scripture out of Acts, Acts 6, verses 1 to 15. We may not read all, all of 1 to 15, but I want to share some thoughts with you. Here we are, the beginning of the church, and uh, Pentecost has come. We looked at that last week as we looked at the Holy Spirit. And a new church is emerging, but as the church emerges, so do personalities and things change. And this is where we start the story. In the story here, on the account of what happens here, is the church is growing, and there are the Hellenistic Jews, and there are the um, Jerusalem Jews, and they are in conflict. And so we begin perhaps by asking the question or making a statement, we have a problem here. And I wonder, as we journey in our, with our churches, that perhaps we have a problem here. So let's read together. So I'm reading from uh, Acts 6 verses 1, and I'll read as far as verse 7 for now. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews, among the others, complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Wait, uh, so the brothers and sisters chose seven men. Choose them and uh, those among you. And make sure that they are known, that they are full of the Spirit and have wisdom. We will return this responsibility over to them. And they will give, and we will give our full attention to the Word of God. They chose Stephen, an interesting choice. A man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Temon, Peremus. And Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles. They prayed over them and laid down their hands. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased. And a rapid number, now hear this word, of priests became obedient to the faith. Let's just stop there. Here we are at the beginning of the church. And the church is in, um, has an opposition, is in, divided. They're opposed to each other. We have the Hellenistic Jews, which are the Greek Jews. And then we have the Jews from Ju Jerusalem. And they are in conflict because it appears that one group is being favored more than another. And the solution to this is that they need to select seven people who will then work with the program of distributing food. Now, I wonder if that's any different today. So often in our churches, we, are at oppos we have opposition. We have a problem. One says, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. No, I don't want to do that because I should be, I've been in the church a long time and I should be doing something different. But not here. Here there is a solution, and the solution is to choose seven men. But what I find interesting about the choice of the seven men is this, Stephen. Stephen is going to become our first martyr, a man filled with, with the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. And he agrees to serve tables so that the disciples, the rest of them, could concentrate on the ministry of the word. And too often we get caught up in wanting something more. I often hear young men say to me when they're coming into ministry, we want to come into the full-time ministry. And I sometimes say to them, but why? Why do you want to come into the full-time ministry? No, that's the only way we can serve. And I say to them, it's not. This is not the only way you can serve. There are many ways you can serve. Full-time ministry is but one. There are many ways that we can serve. And here Stephen teaches us this. Here is a man who has dedicated his life to the Lord. He is, as I said, destined to become our first martyr. 
and he agrees to wait on tables. I believe that is such a testimony of someone who actually knew the value of service, what it meant to serve without prejudice, without um, the, saying, well, I, I, I deserve better. I'm better than this. No, Stephen just says, okay, if that's what you want me to do, that's what I do. I, I love what it says here. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. A man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. We looked last week at the power of the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit is within you and me. And God chooses us to serve him. But then the last little bit in verse 7 says this. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples increased in Jerusalem, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Their testimony was so great and so powerful, and perhaps it was the testimony of Stephen, the fact that he was prepared to serve, was so powerful that the priests of the temple came to faith, came to faith in Jesus, came to recognize that Jesus was the Messiah. You can, we could possibly even think that these men had been part of when Jesus was crucified. And here, in the early part of the church, they come to faith. They come to faith because they see the testimony of service, and the testimony of a church that is not divided and not torn apart. Throughout history, we have seen churches torn apart when one says, I don't want to do that. We see that in our families. And we see that as a community, we cannot grow when we are divided. We cannot possibly grow when we are divided. And God is saying to us, I need a united church one body of Christ. And as we serve as one body, the world will see us and know that we are faithful and that in fact we are like Stephen. We are full of faith and the full of the Holy Spirit. But if we are at each other's throats all the time, and if we are dividing ourselves in churches, the world looks at us and says, oh, we don't want to be part of that. We don't want to be part of that. We go on to the next little bit and Stephen is arrested. And I encourage you to read the rest, which is verses 8 to 15. Stephen is arrested. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Here is a man of great testimony. And he is um, arrested because they tell lies about him, not dissimilar to what happened to Jesus. In fact, very similar to what happened to Jesus. They um, get false witnesses to say, this is what Stephen says. He says that um, we must give up the law of Moses and what God has told us. And that's not what Stephen says. And so they come and they stand against Stephen. But they could not stand against the wisdom of the spirit that the Spirit gave him. And he spoke. They couldn't stand against that. And they try as they might, they could not defeat the Holy Spirit. They could not bring, um, they, couldn't, they couldn't change his ideas. And so it, the story goes on. And these men are men of the Sanhedrin. They are people of the temple. They may well have been the people who were there when Jesus was crucified. And they try very hard to have Stephen discredited, but it doesn't happen. But what happens here is the most amazing thing, is this, that when they heard Jesus, um, Stephen speaking, and the Spirit was so real in him, this is what verse 15 says, all who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw his face was like the face of an angel. The Holy Spirit glowed within him. Do you remember in the Old Testament, Moses' face glowed so greatly that he covered it so that the people wouldn't be um, shocked by the glory that was in him. That glory 
that wonder and awe is in you and me. And so I want to say to you, we as a community of church, a body of Christ, cannot become divided. We cannot allow ourselves to come in and bring dissension into ourselves because the world watches us. And when they watch us, they see what we are and who we are. So I want to ask you today, will you pray for each other? Will you pray for your ministers, your pastors, your teachers? Will you pray for the people of the church that we do not become divided, that we can become a growing community in a world that needs us? And so I look forward to sharing with you next week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and grant you his peace. Amen.